Hey, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Women in Ministry on the Move. We are live and I have my good friend. People think we've met for years. I'm like, we met on Facebook. We sure did. <laughs> <laughs> we sure did. On Facebook. So um, we're going to let you give you guys some time to come on in the room. But while you're doing that, I am going to play one of uh, a beautiful song. Uh, that is a wonderful worship song and it blesses me every time. So I hope you enjoy it as you come on in the room. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Holy 
spirit come we need you Oh, oh my God, <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God. God. That, that person you heard singing is right there on your screen. Thank <laughs> you, great peoples, oh my God. Yes. Um, Welcome to Women in Ministry on the Move. Thank you all for joining. We're going to go ahead and get started. Mm -hmm. In the room, you kick, how you kick me on my own stream? Anyway, <laughs> the devil, get out in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. So uh, y'all hold on for one second and we're going to get started. Welcome, Teray. Can you hear me, Teray? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Praise God. Let me just turn it up a little bit. Thank you for joining me on the show tonight. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Listen, that beautiful worship song is called Holy Spirit, and it is by Teray Peoples. And so please go download that on iTunes, and it will bless you. So uh, she didn't know I was going to play it. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. You know, we welcome the Holy Spirit in the room. And we're going to, um, I want to talk about uh, uh, you and what you've done, uh, the great things uh, that you've done and that you're doing. Uh, you have a brand new organization that is helping hundreds and thousands of women and you are impacting and striking the mark in your community. So, um, Teray, tell me the name of your church and your pastors. Well, I attend Eagles Nest. First off, thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you for playing the song. That blessed me. We'll get into that later. But um, um, I attend Eagles, my husband and I and our family, we attend Eagles Nest Worship Center here in Omaha, Nebraska. And our pastors are James and Alicia Hart. Um, and we've been attending there for 18 years. So, mm -hmm. good things. Yeah. You were the minister of music, the worship leader there. Yes. I was. I was the worship leader there. Um, I was on the praise team for a total of 16 years, but I led the team for 12. So, oh. um, so I was the actual worship leader for 12 years there. Yeah. And, you know, we ain't got to get into it, but we already know what the Lord told you and me concerning those yeah. things and how the Lord used you instrumentally in my life to when he's transitioning you to other things. And you have to uh, uh, when you're used to being in a place where God where it's part of your calling, and then yeah. he gets to stretch you and you move you for, forward into new things and how you have to uh, uh, no pun intended, pass the mic. Or you have to get Joshua ready or Joshua ready and, and, and prepare them and continue to go on for greater things. So we can we can talk a little bit about that. Um, also, um, I just wanted to uh, thank your son. I saw him doing a couple of shows with you. He's so awesome. He's so, yeah. <laughs> so lovely. Oh my God, that just really blessed me. So let me pull up here. I was looking for, I hope it didn't go, but I, I was looking for your 
uh, bio, but I'll do something different this time. I would like you to go ahead and tell us in the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as Kishan so greatly stated, um, I made a, a transition a couple of years ago. In 2019, the yes. Lord said to Ray, it's time to let it go. And I knew exactly what he was saying. He said, it was time to let go of leading praise and worship. And um, I am a fourth generation praise and worship leader. I know praise and worship leader is not the term that they used back then, but it is exactly what they were doing. So yeah. it started with my great grandmother, it passed down to my grandmother, then it passed down to my mother, and my mother passed it down to me. And um, it was just a part of my DNA. It is a part of who I am. Um, and when the Lord tells you to let go of something that you love so dearly, um, it is a shock to your system. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. I was devastated. It was not what I wanted to do. It was not a part of the plan, God. God, this is not what you said. This isn't This isn't the plan. And he says, I have something more for you. In 2019, he told me to let it go, and I was obedient to do so. And for a while, I had to rest. Um, but the Lord allowed me to launch my nonprofit, The Rose House, yes, which is an organization that exists to encourage, empower, and prepare single mothers for life self-sustainability through mentorship and teaching. Um, mm -hmm. We are currently located in one of our local malls here in the city where we um, provide free diapers, diaper wipes, and infant formula, as well as any other baby essential items that we have on hand to single mothers in the community. And so we've been doing that running strong since 20, um, we started in 2019, or I'm sorry, we started in 2018 mm -hmm. and really boots on the ground in 2018 and God has just expanded and done so much more, more than I could have ever asked or imagined. And I'm just so grateful for where I am now. Now that's life in a nutshell. Um, in my personal life, I'm a wife. My husband and I just celebrated our 18th wedding anniversary. Yes, you did. Woo -hoo! Yes, did. Woo -hoo! And yes, yes. 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 And um, together we have four beautiful children. Our oldest daughter, she is completing or entering her senior year at Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we have a 16-year-old 16 16-year-old 16 daughter who is a model who just walked from Mark Jacobs and we're super excited for her. That was awesome. That and, was bad. Yes. Yeah. Good way. <laughs> yes, in the good way. And then as you stated, my 10-year-old son, Princeton, who he thinks he is like the Rose House <laughs> COO. And <laughs> then we have our our youngest, our surprise baby, but she was the gift that the Lord knew that we needed. And that's uh, Miss Carrington. She is nine. So yeah. yeah. So with the Rose House, why was that birth? Talk talk about how that really got started and uh, how it got started with you and some things that you were going through. And yeah. you said, you know what, this is so needed, but you yeah. had no idea down the road what God was going to do. But go ahead, share that. Please. No idea. So. Um, the Rose House was an idea that the Lord gave me 21 years ago. 21 mm -hmm. years ago, I was a single mother. And I knew that um, I just, from the experiences that I was having, I just knew I did not want anyone else to have those same experiences. Mm -hmm. I remember walking to an office and for to, to get some type of assistance and walking out feeling worse than I did before I walked in. Oh. And I just did not want anybody else to feel that way. Yeah. And I went home and I I know now, but then I had no clue. I knew it, I, I know now it was the Holy Spirit that sat me down in my mother's dining room at her computer mm -hmm. and typed out this program. And it's it's always been called the Rose House from that day, from 21 years ago, it was always called the Rose House. And mm -hmm. I typed it out and the vision just, I just carried the vision with me. Now, mind you, I had, I, I was discouraged. Um, I had people tell me that I wasn't educated enough. I had people tell me that it would never work. I had people tell me that somebody else needed to come alongside of me to make it work. And I could just, you know, be whatever. Um, but it was, it was just something that would never leave. Yes. The moment that I would take the vision and I literally took it and I put it on a shelf and I was just like, oh, well, it was just an idea. But God said, no, this is part of your purpose. This is why I 
called you. This is why I created you. This is why I needed you here in the earth. And mm-hmm. I, um, in 2012, I launched out in faith. Someone donated an office to me. Wow. To pay for it in 2012. Um, I, I'm thinking, okay, God, now we're getting ready to hit the ground running, right? Yeah. And we had to close the doors and we lost funding. So we couldn't keep the doors open. And I was like, God, what are you doing? What I didn't know is that he was preparing me for a season where all he wanted me to do was focus and concentrate on our curriculum, which is the book that I wrote, Journey the Road to Empowerment. That's right. And, we'll talk about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I was just writing like a workbook mm-hmm. for our participants. And he said, no, to write it is a, it's a book. And this book is going to help other women. And I was like, God, what are you talking about? This is not, this isn't what I do, you know? And I wrote this book and it was like from the moment that I stepped out and was saying, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. It was like the attacks came, the instant attacks came. And I was like, okay, this is a bit much for me. But um, long story short, 2017 rolls around. Um, and the Lord called me away from my corporate job. And he says, now I want you to focus on ministry full time. And I'm thinking it's music, okay? Mm-hmm. Now I want you to focus on ministry full time. Yes, Lord, I'm gonna do that. And when I say it went quiet, it went quiet. There were no engagements coming in. Nobody was calling, asking me to sing. Nobody was doing anything. And I said, God, this is not it. And it got scary because it was so quiet and it was so still. Mm. I remember going to my pastor, asking her and saying, okay, what am I supposed to do? She said to Ray, if God is telling you to rest, you need to rest. And I said, okay. Um, And I took advantage of that season. 2019, he calls me away from praise and worship. Okay, so now this is the only thing I had going for me. And now you're calling me out from that too. And he said to Ray, I need you to rest because soon you won't be able to. Wow. I said, okay. Now, mind you, at this time, we had opened up our second office and I had over 32,000 diapers in storage um, from community um, agencies in the city that partnered with us to help us, you know, stock up and create our pantry, you know, storage or whatever. And, um, I, but God, I have all of these resources. What do you want me to do with all of these resources that I have, all of these things to run mm-hmm. into rest because soon, you won't be able to. That's at the end of 2019. Okay. Little did I know that at in March of 2020, the whole world was going to shut down because of a global pandemic. Right. So I'm and laying in my bed. Resting and preparing. And he's right. stockpiling you. Right. And I am resting. I'm doing nothing. Literally doing nothing. I'm laying in my bed. Resting. Doing what he told me to do. And he says, Teray, get up, call your pastors, ask them to use one of the children's church classrooms and hand out diapers and diaper wipes. Okay, so I get up, I call my pastors. They say, of course you can. So I go and I go to the storage unit. I get out some diapers. I take them up to the church. We start handing out diapers. The word gets out and within a week's time, there is a line wrapped around the church because people are coming in needing diapers and diaper wipes, which expanded into infant formula. Wow. Now we have agencies such as the Salvation Army, yes. Health Start, Omaha Healthy Start, like all of these great large organizations, they're shut down. So now the Rose House is the answer to a problem that's happening in New York. Come on, Jesus. So now we're getting referrals coming in from the Salvation Army coming in from our emergency helpline saying that the Rose House is handing out free diapers, diaper wipes, and infant formula. Yes. From there, God said, okay, now it's time to expand again. Okay, Lord. He says, contact your local mall. Ask them to donate a space. Okay, you're talking about boldness, right? I'm like, Lord, I don't know anybody. He says, but you know me. So mm. I pick up the phone. I call West Rose. My name is Teray Peoples. I'm the founder and CEO of the Rose House Incorporated. 
we assist single mothers and their children. Do you have a do you have a space within the mall that you're willing to donate to our organization? They said we're going to take it to the manager. We'll get back to you. 24 hours later, absolutely. We'll donate the space to you for the entire summer. So from May wow. of 2020 until September of 2020, our office space in the mall, absolutely free. Now we pay only utilities at the office that we have inside our local mall. Wow. Wow. Come on, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was awesome. And he expanded you and enlarged your territories. Listen, and you're helping single mothers because of what you went through in the past. You said, I don't want anybody else to yes. feel this way, to feel uh, the emptiness, the hollowness, the hurt, the sadness, going through the depression like I felt. And yes. now you're passing out. Let, 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 let me show you. <laughs> Let me show y'all. She said, hey, first of all, this is the Rose House. Yes. The Rose House Incorporate empowering women. Yes. yes. To take care of their babies. Okay. And their families. That's beautiful. Yes. It's thousands of single parents. Absolutely. Not just mothers, men too, but thousands of single mothers. You're yes. helping people. You're Listen. In impacting lives. Listen, it is already a hard enough issue to say, yes, I need help. Yes. That's, there. That's already hard. So why would you make it even harder for a mother who's already in a tough spot to say, I need help, and then make her feel bad for coming and getting the help? And come and get help. Right. So when a mother, I don't even call them mother, they're roses to me. Yes. There are roses because each one of us, each woman is a rose. We are beautiful. Our fragrance yeah. is beautiful. You have to treat us with care. You have to handle us with care. Yeah. You can't just go and grab us or you might get stuck. You know, you have to come and you don't have to, you need to know how to rightly approach me, right? Yes. I call them roses. And each, whenever one of my roses comes into the rose house, not only are they greeted, but they're greeted with respect. Not mm -hmm. only are they greeted with respect, but they are loved on. And before mm -hmm. they leave, we have a moment with Jesus. Each one of them gets prayed over because they have something that they are dealing with that day that I don't know about. Yes. So they may not even want to share, but I cannot tell you how many of my roses have stood in, in that doorway and have just wept and cried and said, thank you so much. My you don't know what I go through. People see me and I'm always laughing and I'm, but I needed that today. And yeah. if I'm able to, I refuse to have anyone leave my presence, leave my organization feeling worse. They are going to feel better than they did. And loved they, on. And they're gonna feel loved on. They're gonna feel appreciated. They're, yeah. gonna be, they're gonna be valued. Come on. Because that's what God does. God says that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. He values them. So I tell them all the time, whenever we pray, um, me and the Rose House staff, we pray. And I say, God, thank you for the opportunity to partner with you to be a blessing to your daughters. I'm in partnership with him. This isn't just something that I just woke up and decided to do. I get to partner with the creator of the universe to be a blessing to his children. And that's what I'm doing. Wow. Well, let me go to some of these comments over here. They are. Go Wendy Hartwell said, what you say? <laughs> Wendy said, come on, look at God. Yeah. Joy Johnson. Hey, Joy. She said, oh, I love all of this. Yeah. Oh, my God. Kim Hurdle said, congratulations on 14 years of holy matrimony. And what else she say, Kim? She, meant to, she put an emoji. That's uh, joy. And let me see. Lord have mercy. I, I so appreciate you all. Mercedes Alsop, thank you. Dion uh, Williams, she said, amen. Yes. Listen, this is so needed. It's so awesome. Um, let me show you guys as well. This is what they are getting. Yes. The Rose House package, what you will receive. This is out in the community. She says, one package of diapers per child. Staff may ask for proof of children. One large package of wipes. 
one or two cans of formula if our supply supports your need. Any other baby essential items that we have available. We serve our community at discretion and reserve the right to deny support. But I like what you said. We serve our community. Yes. Yes. We're serving the community. And let me tell you, um, and make sure the information is right for me today. If you want to donate and you want to cash out her, listen, yeah. the Rose House, uh, dollar sign, the Rose House and the PayPal right there. You're helping, you're helping children. You're helping yeah. single mothers. Come on, formula is expensive. Yes, it is. Okay, diapers yes, and wipes, they're expensive. Dion, say, amen. Yes, it is. I know. <laughs> yes, it yes. is. I'm, I'm going to show that again later. Listen, if you want to donate, please donate to that. And um, name some of the surrounding communities uh, in your area that go ahead and give a shout out so people can come where you are. Yeah. You know, because uh, I hear you when you do the spill when you're at the uh, the mall and you, you know, and then, <laughs> you know, I said, okay, all right. Yes. Tell them where you are, where you're located. If you are a single mother, if you know some single mothers, listen, if you know some single mothers and you know they're struggling, come on. It's a burden off of a mind when you don't have to buy diapers, white yeah. and formulas. Yeah. Listen, my son didn't want to do something. And he was like, I want to share. I said, well, you owe me $13,000. Come on. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the first year of your birth, it is uh, estimated that it costs $13,000 for one baby just for diapers, wipes, and formula. Yeah. $13,000 plus. Yeah. $13,000. He said, you can have some. I said, okay, we ain't going to be selfish. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's how much it costs for one year. Yeah. And it's not a tax write-off. So, yeah. and here we have Reverend Ray Peoples in her community providing this. And God, it reminds me of Joseph in yeah. the Bible. How God stockpiled him and said, get ready. And then when the need was there, they had what they needed and was able to pass out to every family, and he was even able to save his own family. So, I am so I applaud you for hearing the voice of God and listening to the, <laughs> listening to the voice of God. You know, I know how it feels when God tell you to step down from the praise team. Yes, you're like what? What? Yes. Oh my God, you know, yes. it's devastating. You know, because you're like that's 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 my calling, and the Lord says that's part of your calling. So, yes. if you know a single mother. Point them in the direction of Reverend Teray at the Rose House. All of you are beautiful roses. You're beautiful queens, as she said. So, Teray, please go ahead and tell them where you're located. So, we are located in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, our office is inside the West Rose Mall at 10,000 California Street. Um, we are located in the container store hallway across the hall from GameStop. We are there every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 1030 until 3, handing out free diapers, diaper wipes, and infant formula. So if you are or you know a single mother who could use our services, you want to visit us at our website at therosehouseinc.org. Click on that registration tab in the upper right-hand corner. Become a registered participant with us. And once you are registered, we consider you a rose. And our roses can come twice a month. And at each visit, you'll receive a package of diapers, a package of wipes, a can of infant formula, if you need it, as well as any other baby essential items that we have on hand. And... We host a giveaway every single week. So every Thursday, every, week. every Thursday, we help host a giveaway, whether that is a gift card to Target, a gift card to Walmart, if it's a spa package, if it's $100 to pay towards a bill, if it is um, a household item with towels and laundry soap and, you know, dishwashing with it, whatever it is. We host a giveaway absolutely every Thursday. Now, yeah. I want you all to, I know diapers sounds like such a simple thing, but I want you to hear, hear my heart. The government does not consider diapers to be a basic necessity in parenting, okay? They do not consider diapers a basic necessity. However, whether you are single, whether you are married, if you are a parent, you understand how nece how necessary diapers are, okay? Our single mothers are having to make the decision of, 
do I go to the store and buy a package of diapers or do I take that money and put it in my gas tank? It is the decision of going to work or staying at home. It is the decision of, am I able to take my child to daycare? Because you cannot take your child to daycare with cloth diapers and right. you have to supply their own diapers for yeah. your child, okay? So I want you all to please hear my heart that this is such a need. It is so necessary that we continue to provide the support without judgment, without judgment, because everyone's situation is not the same. We have single mothers that come to us from all walks of life. Let me give you an example. We have an idea of how some people might be single mothers, but we don't. But here's another here's another viewpoint I want to give you. I had another young lady that came into my office a couple years ago, and she was a newly widow. Okay, mm-hmm. she was um, moved. She moved back to Nebraska to be close to family from Texas um, because her nine-year-old daughter was at home alone when her husband had an unexpected unexpected heart attack and died in front of their nine-year-old daughter and they just found out two weeks prior that she was expecting the baby oh no so when we are saying we are helping single mothers we are helping single mothers from all facets of life from all yeah. walks of life from yeah. all oh my because of all circumstances so yeah. Let's expand our understanding of what it means to be a single mother because all you can't put us all in the same box. That's you can't right. put us all in the same box. So um, when we're asking for support for these single mothers, we're asking support for families because this is going to allow mom just to have a little bit more peace knowing that she can take properly take care of her family for that week. Amen. Amen. That is beautiful. And you can't put all single mothers and families in the box. No. Every situation is is different and this is ministry at the heart this is ministry in the marketplace reaching this is god's heart yes he hears their cries and so he's using you and others and listen the salvation army they will be crazy not to partner with you yes their doors are closed i would do that i would say well her doors are open and isn't that amazing yes isn't yeah. that amazing? <laughs> and and they're partnering with you and sending, hey, we can't help you un- until they the government opens us back up, but Reverend Saray can help you. Go so over right. here. This is the address. That's that's community, yeah. that's partnership. Because they're not trying to get their name out. The Salvation Army is doing what you want to do. They just want to help the community yeah. too and help the needs of the people. And so here they come to you and they get called your beautiful rose. Your fragrance is beautiful and pleasant in the nostrils of the Father. You love on them. I'm stuck on the $200 gift card. Yeah. You know, after they get their groceries, their goodies. Yeah. You give a, you have a giveaway. I saw you do a giveaway. You had diaper bags. Yeah. You yeah. had, uh, listen, you had, um, you had some, some baby items. We had, um, that was our nursery giveaway where we did a diaper bag full of items so that we had they received yes. full of diapers, baby powder, baby lotion, as well as a stroller, a pack and play, and a baby rocker. I saw the pack and play. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh my, this, that is amazing. Yeah. You don't have to buy a pack and play, a stroller. Come on, a stroller by itself, we know costs money. Yes. And I'm getting diapers, wipes, and formula. Yes. This is a complete blessing. And I, I love it. One video I saw, you, you said, Look at all this stuff behind me. Yeah. And then you showed boxes. They kept sending boxes of formula. Yes. Boxes of diapers. I'm so that blesses me. Yeah. You know, to know that the community is being reached and how they're treated. Like you said, it's hard enough to say, I need help. Yeah. And then to step out, walk, drive, go over there, get a ride. You know what I'm saying? To go over there. And then when you get there. You get called beautiful, yes. loved on, you get prayed for, you get ministered to. Yes. And that release of crying because God is ministering to his people. Yes. That's beautiful, Reverend Teray. I, I'm so yes. glad you answered the call. Greater yes. is coming. This is just the beginning. Greater, so much greater is coming. And so 
Um, I feel my help. I don't want to get churchy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I listen, uh, uh, listeners. I asked uh, Reverend Teray if she would sing a little bit uh, for us. Listen, please go to iTunes. She has a a wonderful Kim Hurdle. You already know. Go to <laughs> iTunes. I'm looking at you. I'm busting her out. Anyway, that's my friend. <laughs> Download. Come on, Joy. Come on, you guys. Dion, download Holy Spirit by Tavray Peoples. Every time I play that song, it just, it sends me into the presence of the Lord. And I, I'm telling you, um, you will love it. It ministers, it ministers to you. So whatever, uh, Reverend Tavray, you want to give us a, a, a snippet of, however you want the Lord to use you, we are, we are here. Amen. You know, I wanted to say um, thank you for playing that song. And it's because, uh, like, you understand the love that you have for praise and worship, right? Yes. Um, and when you don't have an opportunity to do something for a long time, if you're not careful, the enemy will come in and tell you that you'll never be able to do it again. Come and, on. Yes, he will. Um, I know that it's still very much a part of who I am very much a part of what God intends for me to do. He's not done yet, right? He's not done. It's not over. Right. Um, and so thank you for, that was just encouragement to me. And it was also confirmation for some things that the Lord was telling me to do here in the next few uh, few months. But All right. um, I, I I shared with um, Ms. Bashan before we started that I'm going to sing a song that has just been helping me for the past several years. And that song is My Help. Um, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Yes, so it. I pray that it blesses you and it ministers to you the same way that it's ministered to me. So we're going to do this acapella today. Is that all right? That's all right. Okay. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from what's coming, my help. My help comes from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keep thee, He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is my shade upon my right hand, upon my right hand, no the sun shall not smite thee by day. Nor the moon by night, he shall preserve my soul, even forevermore. Oh, my help, my help. My help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Glory to God. I'm trying to keep it together. Glory to God. Right. That was beautiful. Glory to God. Amen. Our help coming from the Lord. I know. I know, y'all. <laughs> Them comments. I know. Yes, let me. Oh, my God. Beautiful. They're worshiping. Thank you all for commenting so much. Thank you for encouraging us, Reverend Teray Peoples. Listen, I want to tell you. Elder Robin Alexander said, beautiful. Dion says, that was very encouraging to me. Joy says, this blessed me. Amen. He's not done with us. 
He's not done. Let me let me share this. I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying to keep it together. Um, <laughs> but listen, you guys, I had I had um, the Lord had told me to step down from the praise team. I, I, don't, I think that was October 2019. It was directly after my pastor's um, um, pastor's appreciation, his birthday celebration. And listen, he didn't tell me in October. He told me in June, wow. this is it. And I said, Lord, wait a minute. You know, this is, I love this. I yeah. love singing praise and worship to you. It's, it's in my DNA, it's in my spirit. You know, I love teaching people yeah. about praise and worship, why we do it, who we do it to and for. This is yeah. what you instilled in me, instructed me. I was devastated. Yeah. I, I, and he said, let the minister of music now. I cried. I wiped my tears. I went to church. Uh, and a certain, before that, I said, Lord, can I please not get off right away? Mm -hmm. He gave me permission. I said, can I, can I stay until after the pastor's appreciation? Because we had already started preparing everything. This is true. And the closer it got, to the appreciation, he would remind me, the Lord would remind me, tell your praise and worship leader, this is it. Yeah. I okay. So I told my worship leader, he said, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, what? You know, I, I said, I have to obey the Lord. You know, I said, no one did anything wrong. It's yeah. not negative. The Lord just is telling me to step down and listen, the week before the anniversary. Now, you know when the Lord speaks to you. Yeah. you he fixed it so I couldn't deny it. See? I think, oh, is that you, Lord? No, no, that's the devil. You know, yeah. I, I said, Lord, I hear you. I yeah. know it's you. And I, I told him again. And that was it. I was I was beside myself. Yeah. Um, one of the elders said, I just want to make sure everything is okay. Why did you step down? I said, I had a beautiful time. Yeah. No one did anything wrong to me. And my leader said, she didn't, we gonna miss her. Oh my God, she didn't do anything wrong. I said, this is, I'm just obeying the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, I thought, okay, I didn't know what was going on. So listen, users, come to find out there was other reasons but the main reason was because he was developing me and getting, re getting me ready for other things. And he still yeah. is. Yeah. But health-wise, find out some things that was going on health-wise, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to continue anyway. Wow. So I said, Lord, I just thank you. I yeah. thank you. Um, then one day when I was just overwhelmed with, oh, God, like you said, the enemy will try to come in. Oh, well, God is not going to use you in praise and worship anymore. He's not going to use you. I thought you were a psalmist. I thought he told you. You know how the devil is. Yes. And I started praying in the Holy Ghost. I was laying on the couch. I was in my living room, wiping my face, crying. And I kept seeing your face. And he said, I said, why am I seeing Teray? He said, call her now. Yeah. I text you. I called you. Yeah. Listen, listeners, I'm telling to Ray yeah. what the Lord has done in October. She is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so Ray was laughing. Everything that you're going through now. Yeah. I went through in April. Yes. Every time I would cry and have a temper tantrum, God, why you make me get off the praise thing? What's going on? So Ray face would be right here. And he said, call me her. Yeah. You want me to call? I called her and she ministered to me. Because see, sometimes, listen, worship leaders, whatever you want to call them, worship leaders, praise and worship leaders, yeah. minister to Jesus, it's all the same. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> we're so busy encouraging others. Come on. So getting in the word, okay, God, what you want us to sing? Because we're there to, listen, we're not there to minister to God's people. We're there to minister to him. 
Yes. I had to minister to him. The Lord said, I didn't ask you to pump and prime them. No. You're to minister to me, and yes. I will minister through you to them. Those are my people. And he yes. said, well, I said, Lord, they're your people. So yes. I so he's teaching me these all these years. And so that's why to I'm very, I'm still ex- I know you understand. I'm still extremely passionate about praise and worship. Yes. You know how the army has scouts that yes. go out before the platoon come out in the brigade. Come on. That yes. We're the scouts. The praise yes. teams are the scouts. We're there shooting the enemy. We got a bogey. We're tearing up the atmosphere and getting the Lord, setting the atmosphere for the Lord. And so the That's pastor right. can come up and give the word. So right. when I see praise teams on TV or Facebook, and they got smoke, smoke coming out and flashing lights. I'm like, is this showtime at the Apollo? Mm-hmm. This America got talent. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. We are not supposed to look like the world. Mm-hmm. We, we're not. So it, I would always tell my team when I was a worship leader, if the pastor got to come up and pray, and warn the spirit after we minister, mm-hmm. we have failed. Mm-hmm. We gotta have, we gotta live what we sing about. Mm-hmm. We gotta live what we sing about because the Lord taught me it, it's the word of God in song. Mm-hmm. You're not behind the pastor and his wife, or if they're not married, if I, you're alongside them. Mm-hmm. The word of God in logos, Raymond, and you're the word of God in song. Mm-hmm. And so when the Lord tells you, okay, I need you to step down from that and do something else. This is what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. It takes, it hits your humanity first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to Ray said, everything you're experiencing now, mm-hmm. I've experienced in April. And I remember what you said. You said you were singing. You said my arms was outstretched. Yeah. I was singing for sure, and the Lord said, "It's time to let it go." Yes. The cra- the the crazy part is what what I saw, what was happening in the natural, is what was happening in the spirit. I was physically open, and I was open in the spirit to be able to hear and receive what the Lord was telling me. Yes. And it was such a profound moment. Yes. And. I just, it was a good service. You know, you know, you have those, you, you have, every service is supposed to be good. Don't yeah. Get it wrong. But it was just one of those moments where you are just enjoying your time in the presence of the Lord. I in, thoroughly enjoyed it and I was having a good time, right? And I had finally got to, I was like, oh, yes, God, this is it. Okay, this is what I've been working towards all these years. And he says, now I want you to let it go. A lot of it, I believe it was it was God asking to see if my heart was actually right. Lord, am I really yielded to what he wants me to do? Yes. Or am I just going to continue to do what it is that I want to do? Yes. And I, my life, I want to be pleasing to the Lord. I want my life so desperately to be pleasing to God. I want him to be able to look at me and say, yes, daughter. I can trust you with my people, or yes, God, or I can I can trust you knowing that you will go out and you will represent me, but not only represent me, but you will represent me right and well. And yeah. that's what I desire. Um, most importantly, above all else, I desire to be pleasing to him. And in any of it, if it means me letting go something that I love, I'll let it go. There's a meme that's going around where it's Jesus and a little girl, and Jesus the little girl has this little teddy bear. Yes. Jesus has this huge teddy bear behind his back. Yes. And he's saying, he keeps asking the little girl, Give me your, can I have your teddy bear? And she's, yes. she's reluctant to give him the teddy bear because she doesn't know that what he has behind his back is something so much greater. And mm-hmm. I believe that if I give him what I have, if I give him my teddy bear, he's going to give me an even bigger teddy bear, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm I'm just that little girl. I'm like that little girl who's just trusting her father to believe that his teddy bear is so much bigger than my teddy bear. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Yeah. And I remember we talked after that and I said, you know, uh, Teray, are you doing praise and worship again yet? You said, 
sometimes they they ask me, you know, and I help out from time to time. And so mm-hmm. I remember I said, Lord, are you going to release me to do any of that? You know, was and not yet. Yeah. No. And let me tell you, I I said, okay, okay. And I just said, Lord, you can have it. Mm-hmm. You can have it. And here it is in 2021. Yeah. And July. it was before that, I think a month or two before, the Lord started dealing with me about singing again on the praise team. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, what? Because I was completely... <laughs> I was doing something. Listen, I'm doing what you told me to do. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and I said, oh, okay. And he tells me, okay, I want you to start working on. He gave me some songs. Mm. Start, but he wouldn't allow me to release them. Yeah. I want you to start writing them again because I kept saying, this is not right. This this song is not ready. And I told the producer, I said, God is not allowing me to release it yet. And so I have some instructions. I said, okay, okay, Lord. You know, because he sees me all. Yes. And I take comfort in that. I take comfort in that he knows me all. You're yes. bigger than me, God. You're smarter than me. You're greater than me. I'm just clay in your hands. And I, you, I trust you, Lord. And I believe, God, that you know what's better for me. And so here now... Occasionally, I sing on my praise team, and this listen, it's a blessing for me. But I know, I know, don't get too comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> he lets me know, don't, don't you get okay, okay, Lord. you know, okay, I'm obedient to what you said, but don't you get, don't you get too comfortable because you're still going to do, I'm still going to do what he says. That's right, you yeah. know. What Thing and so, yeah. but amen. <laughs> I just remember, thank you so much for encouraging me during that time. Because listen, and I'm glad you know the Lord told me to call you because, um, uh, praise and worship. I'm gonna say this praise and worship leaders need encouragement too. Yes, you know, pastors yes. need encouragement too. Yes. They, pastors need prayer, pastors yes. need someone to pray over them. And to know how they feel, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Elders and deacons and ministers, those who labor in the ministry, the staff, they need prayer, you know, and encouragement too. So, you know, I'm just, you know, to all who's watching, pray for your leadership, your church leadership. Pray for your praise team and your choirs. You know, pray for them. You know, because even if they're going through things, they still have to show up. Yes. Yeah. And they do. The pastors, listen, the pastors go through things too, and they still are diligent, faithful, committed, and they still show up. Yes. Teray, amen. Uh, Teray also has a book called The Journey, The Road to Empowerment yes. by Ray B. Peoples. Please tell them how they can get it, Teray. Um, you can contact me on Facebook. It's also available on Amazon. So you can go look at it, find it on Amazon. You can get it in two days. Amen. <laughs> And let me put this back up because I want you guys to know what you have to do to, uh, if you want to donate. Again, let me let you know it is the Rose House, and yes. this is what they're getting. They get a package of diapers per child. That's awesome. One yes. large package of wipes, one or two cans of formula, and any other baby essential items that they have available. And if you would like to donate, please donate to the Rose House. Dollar sign the Rose House. Come on, you can remember that. The Rose House or PayPal is right there. And listen, after this broadcast is over, you can log back on and see this. And we're going to have it up there uh, for you. Thank you, Reverend to Ray Peoples. Thank you, Rose House. Yeah. Women Ministry on the Move. And I'll be in touch. I'm, I'm going to send you a file. <laughs> okay. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for singing. Thank you for blessing us and ministering to us. We love you so much. I'm telling you, in the ministry, we support you guys. So, amen. So, I'm going to leave you with the last word. I want you just to give us a snippet, Teray. Uh, you did a broadcast and you talked about stepping out on what God has told you to do. So, I'm going to give you the last saying, the last word with that to leave us encouraged. Amen. So, listen, um, God has given us all 
a mandate. There's been something that he has spoken to us all to do. And the first thing is just overcoming the fear, overcoming the fear of what if it doesn't happen? What if it's not going to work? But here's what I want to remind you of. God is not ever going to call you out into something that he's not going to meet you at. And if he's told you to do it, then just trust him. We might not always understand his plan. We might not all be able to see his plan step by step, but he has a pretty good track record. If he was there for Moses when Moses had to leave and go out to the wilderness, if he was there with Abraham when he told Abraham to leave your family and go to a land of which I will show you, if he was there with Joseph while Joseph was in the pit, he was with Joseph while he was in the palace. Listen, he was with Ruth when Ruth had to leave her own land to go to a land that she had never been to. He has a pretty good track record. At mm -hmm. each account, at each account, it was greater than anything that they could ever, ever imagine. Listen, when you're stepping out in purpose and when you live in purpose, you live in a place that you never, that you've only ever imagined and only ever dreamed of. But God is not the man that he would lie or the son of man that he will repent. His word says that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or imagine according to the power that works on the inside of you. Therefore, it is your responsibility to tap into that power. What is that power? Where is that power? Tap into that. And he says, I'm going to meet you where your ability ends and I will handle the rest. Um, I was in my Bible study this morning when it was talking about, um, it's in first, um, no, we, it was in Galatians. I was studying Galatians and it talks about us um, um, getting frustrated. And it was Paul being very frustrated with, with the new believers um, of trying to go revert back to the law. And he says, was it not you hearing the gospel that was taught, that saved you, that filled you with the spirit. So then why would you try to go back into your own works? We find ourselves being frustrated when mm -hmm. things go the way that we planned them to, because now we're relying on our own ability instead of trusting and having faith in God. If you trust and you rest in God's plan, trust me, his timing is always perfect. Look at God. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Saray. God bless you so much. Listen, you've been listening to Women in Ministry on the Move with Rashawn Allen and my special VIP guest, the one and only Reverend to Ray Peoples. I, I, listen, please go get that. If you want to be blessed, you want to open up your devotion, your worship, go ahead and download Holy Spirit by Ray D. Peoples, and it will bless you. Oh, my God. It will bless you. So that's what we can pray right now. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just want you guys to hear it. And we're going to end with that. God bless you. I'm going to play a few seconds of that. Amen. <laughs> Come on, see you. She's already helping you set the atmosphere. <laughs> Listen, we need a sound. Wow. More than anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it is magic. Wow. Oh, oh. Thank you, Elder Robin. Oh, my God. It's a praise and worship team. You're leading us into the presence of the Lord. People come to church to get Jesus. Oh my God. Yes, you do. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Again, to Ray People's Holy Spirit, she stepped out on faith and she's encouraging us to do the same thing. Okay. If you don't feel empowered and strengthened, we're going to have her back on the show and I'm just going to turn the floor over to her and she's going to give you the whole message on stepping out and doing what God has called you to do. Do it afraid. Joyce Meyer said, do it afraid. That's she right. had to do it. 
I, I never forget Joyce Meyer said she, God told her to start her church, start a Bible study. She was in her garage teaching Bible study with a cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and she did it. She said, listen, talk to God just like you talk to people on the phone. Just talk to him and he'll talk back. So if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we encourage you, Romans 10, 9 and 10, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and, your Lord and Savior because he loves you. He sent his only begotten son to die once and for all for the world. And so we pray that you will give your life to Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross and that for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Boom, just like that. You have crossed over from darkness to light. And God, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. He, no one's perfect. Christians aren't perfect. We're just saved. <laughs> and we're still under construction. And God is still developing and delivering us, shaping and molding us. He's the potter and we're the clay on the wheel. So allow the Lord to be Lord, meaning he's the boss. That's right. He's in charge. That's right. And he's Savior. Amen. 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 And, and the Holy Spirit, he's the third person of the Godhead. And he will talk with you and lead and guide you. The Bible says he will lead and guide us into all truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. In your practice and speak it all that we need. More of your power, more of your glory. In your presence is the most joyous song that I got. Woo! Okay. Amen. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you, Reverend Teray. And bless you. God, um, ma'am. And let me close this out. Thank you guys for joining us on Women in Ministry on the Move. We'll see you next week, maybe Sunday. Who knows? I might do a pop up. Stay tuned. We'll see. God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. Amen. Amen.